Hello friends, Stevie from South Dakota. Um, I am thankful to be in South Dakota in this late date of the year of our Lord, uh, June 27th, 2022. Welcome to the Stevie from South Dakota show. First time I ever called it that. I hope it's more than a show. <laughs> so anyway, um, this video might be five minutes long or 20 minutes long. A lot of ground to cover. And um, maybe just I'll start off by saying that this is the first world war in the history of humanity wherein I would say 80 plus percent, probably more than that, maybe 90 plus percent of the people, number one, don't have any idea we're in a war. <laughs> we're in a world war, but they don't have any idea we're in a war. And they don't have any idea who the enemy would be, even if they did say, yes, you're right, we're in a war for survival for humanity, okay? Now, if you're a biblical Christian, uh, none of this is surprising. I have been saved for 36 years and been talking about uh, these being the last of the last days, okay? And, um, you know, I used to say, you know, we're years, maybe a decade away, something like that. Now I say we are days, weeks, maybe months away. I'm honestly surprised I'm still here, that I haven't been raptured out of here. And I've talked a little bit about the rapture. Uh, in these videos, if any of you are following it. If you're not, that's okay. I have to put it out there. So God told Ezekiel, he said, if I tell you these things and warn you of what's going to happen to my people and you don't give them the warning, God says the blood isn't going to be on their hands, uh, you know, for their judgments that he visits on the people for their sin. He said, the blood's going to be in your hands, Ezekiel, uh, because I warned, told you to warn them and you failed uh, to fulfill the mission of your being a prophet. So I certainly don't claim to be a prophet, but I do have the gift of prophecy and I have the gift of discernment. Those are gifts given to me. It's nothing to boast about. Uh, Paul talked about boasting in the Lord. So there you go. If I'm going to boast, it's going to be boasting in the Lord. I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, before I got saved, when I was 26, I got saved. I was the biggest loser of <laughs> anybody I've ever known in my life. And I, I was going to make a joke after that and say, no, I'm just a partial loser. So that's partially true. I'm a partial loser, but I'm a saved partial loser. And there's nothing better than that um, other than being a complete uh, saved person, which I know once uh, the rapture happens or my death, I know upon that I will be in heaven with a new mind, new heart, new body, and I can't wait because I still sin. And I know a lot of people that are really true believers in Jesus Christ. They've been born again. They go, they, you know, they struggle daily. I mean, it's a daily struggle to walk in the light as he is in the light, as Jesus is in the light. Anyway, let's get back to less important things, because the most important thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But you've got to believe it in your heart. You can't just say, yep, I believe Jesus died and rose again for the dead. Now I'm saved. No, you have to believe it in your heart. I love how God just kind of ties you down to that. You know, he's not going to just let you make a false uh, confession slash profession and then be good to go and then just live a completely carnal life, uh, irregardless and, and without any um, respect to Jesus and his influence in your life, etc. So, um, but I think it's going to have to be a two-part video. Um, so the less important thing would be how, since the COVID-19 uh, thing burst upon the scene in March of 2022, um, the world experienced a, I guess you'd say it's second Reichstag false flag event of the 21st century. The first one was 9-11. And what both of these events have done have coalesced every aspect of the new world order, okay, into its completion, which, you know, it's going to be uh, what the Bible referred to as the last Gentile empire, and uh, this will be presided over by the Antichrist and false prophet, which I've talked about quite a bit. I believe we're on the cusp of that happening. I believe the rapture will be the triggering and catalytic event to thrust us into the seven year tribulation period, ending in Armageddon. And if you, uh, you know, even pagan goddess worshiper Al Gore said, um, said, said that. Uh, that uh, and, and this was, I think, over 10 years ago he said this, when things were much less defined, although very well defined too, but in terms of the signs of the last days. And Al Gore said uh, to read the daily headlines is like taking a nature hike through the book of Revelation. Well, if a pagan goddess worshiper can acknowledge that these days 
are not only heady days, they're revelation days. And this is why it's like if you were standing, walking down the street, you came to a corner and you saw a shadow uh, cast itself, uh, and you could see the shadow coming around the or coming up to the corner, then you know that the reality casting that shadow is soon to follow that. So we see all these shadows and types of the tribulation period, which Al Gore referred to in the book of Revelation. Revelation is very detailed about what the events in Revelation will look like. They're going to be brutal. Uh, literally billions of people will lose their lives, um, etc. And um, so if we see all these shadows and types being cast ahead of itself, i.e. the tribulation type events, uh, then we know that the actual tribulation, just like the person casting the shadow, will soon appear. So we know the tribulation is around the corner. And like I said, I, I honestly didn't think by now true Christians would be here. I figured they'd be raptured out of here uh, and I would you know, go with them. Uh, so every day to me is I'm just kind of like, part of me is like, Lord, what else do you want us to do other than just witness to people that uh, you know, Jesus in Luke 21, if you read the whole chapter of Luke 21, uh, you will get really a beautiful and succinct synopsis of the times within which we live. It's remarkable. And I think it's Luke 21, 36, right around there, where uh, he said, uh, he's referring to the time of God's wrath, which is the tribulation period. Okay, this is that wrath that God pours out on a wicked, unbelieving world, just like he did in the days of Noah. So a few people say, well, God's so cruel, he just wants to judge and kill everybody. No, he's given us all, as individuals, multiple, multiple, multiple chances to repent, to turn our lives toward him, and to say, Lord, my life is yours. I'm a sinner. I need Jesus as my Savior. Okay, so... Nobody can say that, oh, they never heard the gospel, or, I mean, sure, there could be people in remote parts of the earth, but they're going to be judged according to the law written in their hearts, and that's very expressly and explicitly defined in Romans, uh, if you want to read about that. But for the most part, in today's world, most people, especially I know in, in, in the Western countries, have heard the gospel, and we're accountable for that. So, this... Tribulation event, which is, uh, it has to be around the corner because the shadow is here. We're seeing types and shadows in spades, okay, since 9-11 and then COVID amplified it many, many, many more times. And so now we are basically in what I call the suspension period. Uh, it seems like God has given us like, you know, the calm before the storm, okay? Like if you've been through a tornado, hurricane, whatever, there's this short-lived calm, maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, and then all hell breaks uh, loose. That actually happened to me this year again with a type of a straight-line tornado event. Um, this is an eight-minute video. I'm seeing this. Um, I'm going to stop here and pick up where I left off, and we're really going to get into it. And we're hoping that just as Paul described the Old Testament as the schoolmaster, so in other words, the Old Testament law is like the schoolmaster that leads us to Christ. Because when you look at the Old Testament and the law, nobody could keep it. The priests couldn't keep it. The prophets had a hard time keeping it, or did, couldn't keep it perfectly. I mean, they were the best, but they couldn't keep it perfectly. So the only way that we can be um, right in God's sight is to be 100% right. We can't do 99% of the law and then fail on 1%. That's not up to God's standard, okay, because God is perfect. Well, anyway, we know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, it is taught to us in the New Testament that his sins, if we accept him as our Savior, his sins once and for all time, or excuse me, our sins once and for all time are forgiven us. That doesn't mean we still don't sin, and it also doesn't mean that we won't, uh, you know, suffer some loss in heaven, meaning we won't receive as many rewards as we would have otherwise for the deeds done in our body. So it does matter how we live once we become Christians. It matters a lot. Uh, but, but having said that, every true Christian that's been truly born again in Christ, uh, their sins for all time. In other words, we're made perfect um, dispositionally uh, for eternity. And of course, especially once we do go to heaven, then we are literally going to have sinless, perfect bodies like Jesus did. Jesus was the only sinless, perfect person that ever walked the earth because he was obviously God and man simultaneously, both 100%. Um, okay, here we go. 10 minutes. I better sign off 
but just had to little, lay a little bit of groundwork there and try to get the gospel out there in simple terms that most uh, can understand. Have a great one. I'll see you soon.